Is this good? I don't know. I gotta sit up. We're getting cozy, comfy, cozy, cozy, comfy today. Cozy, comfy, cozy, comfy today. Hi, hello, my name is Michelle. Um, today we're doing a little bit of a different video. I'm gonna open up to you guys a little bit about something that just recently happened to me. Um, I'm only opening up because I feel like my story might be able to help somebody because I struggled for so long um, with this problem. So I would, I just want to share um, just in case I could help. So uh, just a trigger warning to start off this video. Um, we are going to be talking about mental health issues. So um, anxiety, depression, um, unaliving ourselves. Um, things that have to do with periods, uh, like a women's menstrual cycle, and uh, like SSRIs. So we were talking about all sorts of stuff like that, so if those types of things make you uncomfortable or whatever, please don't watch this video. I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about my struggle with mental health and what I've gone through throughout the years. Um, I'm a 30, I'm 35 years old, so I've been dealing with my mental health um, for years. It became really relevant or, um, I don't know if the word relevant is right, but um, I became very aware of me having maybe some problems with my mental health when I was about like 17, 18 years old and I had a boyfriend and he was just like, why are you so crazy? And I was like, I don't know, and like freaking out. So I sought out therapy at that point. Um, the therapist at the time just wanted me to read and I wasn't a reader. Still kind of not really a reader. Um, so uh, she just like suggested some books and that's where she wanted me to start and I never did. So I kind of just quit from there, which is actually kind of really funny because the book that she, she suggested that I read, um, a therapist years later in my 30s suggested me that I read the exact same book. So it's kind of funny how that worked out. I took a long break in between there. I didn't do anything after that. I didn't go back to therapy until much, much, much later in life. I was 27 years old and my mom um, got sober from drinking and I um, at that point recognized her, her alcoholism and how that may have affected me throughout my life and uh, it threw me and so I, um, <laughs> I had to go and find someone to talk to because something, it just, something was off. Something's off with this camera, which is fucking me up. Hold up. Sorry, I don't know if the lighting is weird on this video, so if it is, I apologize. I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't know what's going on. My nephew was, like, messing with my camera last, which I was fine. I just don't know if he pressed something. And I don't know computers or uh, cameras well enough to say what's wrong. So either way, I went to therapy at 27. <laughs> I went back to therapy at 27. I went to a different person and I seemed to get pretty far. I was, um, like I said, my mom got sober. Um, I started to like realize childhood traumas that I kind of suppressed for a really long time. But at that time, the therapy wasn't really helping that much. I, w I was going and I felt like at the time maybe it was helping and I think I learned a lot about um, sticking up for myself in those moments and um, saying no and um, which I struggled with from before. So, but also was sticking up for myself. I took it like really literal and I got me in trouble at work. And um, I was just going through a lot of really like really rough times, like very struggle, struggle forward. But at this very point in my life, I was very adamant every single time I went to a doctor, uh, or no, I'm sorry, when every time I would go to a therapist, I would always be like, I am not gonna take medicine. I'm here to get better this natural way and I want to get over and learn coping skills and all this. This is what I would say. Always. So I went to this lady for, I don't know, probably like a year, year and a half and then I moved to Columbus so I stopped going to her and this was before like telehealth and all that. So um, I went to Columbus and I seemed to be doing well. Um, I was still drinking a lot and mind you like alcohol played a huge part in my uh, suppressing my feelings where I would drink and then I'd forget about it for in the moment and then it would it was just a cycle 
so alcohol played a huge part in that. So I mean, I moved to Columbus. I was still drinking a ton. I was still going out every night. Um, so nothing really changed there other than uh, my surroundings. So that was cool. That was nice. I like to be around new people. It was nice to get to know new people. Um, so I really, really liked that. Um, that was, I moved there in like 2018. So in 2019, my father passed away. I was about 33 years old, or 32, 33 years old at that point. I was 32. I was 32. And I started, obviously I uh, sought out therapy after that. Now I went back to the lady that I had gone to before and it just wasn't vibing. So then COVID happened and I started going to a new lady via telehealth, which was awesome. I love telehealth. There was, I'm so much of an empath, so whenever I'm in a room with someone who is maybe uncomfortable or unsure about what I'm saying, and I can see it in her body language, like the way she's sitting or her facial expressions or whatever, um, I would be, I would change my tone or my, way I would, how I would talk so that I could make her maybe more comfortable, which was then defeating the purpose of why I was even at therapy in the first place. So having telehealth helped that because I couldn't really see her body language other than her face, which I loved. So that helped a lot. It helped me open up a lot. And I think at this point, at this in my 30s, I was like at a point where I was like so overly, I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like I was so over being depressed and sad and de all of that. Um, this lady that I went to via telehealth helped me with getting sober. She um, she had a lot of experience with that, and so she kind of just like was really supportive in that. She didn't really do anything. I didn't, but other other than like I, she kept tabs on me, and I think I needed someone to do that as on on top of myself holding myself accountable. She held me accountable, and I felt good to like go to someone and be like that I who I knew would be super proud of me and be like, I'm this many days sober. And she was like, holy crap, like that's amazing. You know, and like, and then I would cry for like the entire session for like, and then I would need like hours to recover from that. But it was hard, but it was so worth it. But still not going to take medicine. Um, she ended up having, she was pregnant and she ended up having a baby. And so she went on maternity, maternity leave. And I have not gone back yet since. Um, but whenever I left her, I was on a huge high point. I was um, I was feeling really good. And she even said that. She was like, I think you're at a really good point right now. So she felt good where we had left off. But that's how the cycle works. That's just the cycle with me, is that I will be at a very high point. I'll be super high for like a week or two. And then I will hit the bottom of the barrel lows and it will come like that like in a blink of an eye and I can't even feel it like I can't even not feel it but I can feel it <laughs> I can't even describe it and I can't help it or hold it off it just takes over it's like the plague and it just like takes over like an obscurus you know the obscure obscurus like in Fantastic Beasts if you guys ever you guys are Harry Potter fans or whatever but there's like this black obscure, so like takes his anxieties take over. And like, that's basically what it feels like is that it's like this black cloud that like whoo, takes over. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. So then after that, I'll be like a few weeks later losing my mind. Like, why is this happening to me? Why is this doing this again? Why am I do going through this? So this is how like I wrote some this whole thing out before but I'm kind of just like using it as a scrim but this is really sad this is I wrote this as soon as I got home from the doctor about what I'm about to start talking about and this is how my depression makes me this is what it does to me it says "Ooh, I hate myself I'm a loser you're fat no one loves you everyone hates you your family hates you you don't deserve love remember that one time yeah everyone still thinks about that that's why you have no friends it's better you're alone Stay away, stay away from everyone. Don't leave your house. No one wants to see you anyways. Don't talk to anyone. Ew, someone is texting you and asking you how I am. They don't really care, Michelle. Remember, everyone hates you. You are just like your father. I should just start drinking again. You're just going to die like, die young like your dad. 
you might as well just do it now get it over with start drinking so you can go and kill yourself <gasps> So, <sighs> the thing that's crazy is I read this last night and I did not have this reaction. <clears throat> I think it's just like reading it out loud is like so crazy. It's really sad actually <laughs> where, you know, where I was just like this. I literally just wrote this like two months ago. It wasn't even that long ago. So anyways, you understand, right? You get the picture of how I feel whenever I'm going through these depressions. And this is a monthly cycle. This happens every month, all the time, like clockwork. So I would go insane monthly. I would call my mom. I would cuss her out, tell her, um, every, call her every name in the book. Um, I would, you know, I would close everybody out. And then I got into a point where it's like, I felt like my presence around people was causing sadness or causing um bringing everybody down you know i would yell at my dog sometimes and then i'd cry my eyes out because i'd feel so bad i was like don't understand what's going on like why is this happening why is this happening like i can't control it so i have dealt with this depression like literally pretty much my entire life um the last episode i had was really scary which was what that was written about um and i knew like i needed to get help immediately <sighs> i need to breathe for one second so I've always struggled with PMS. I've all that's what I thought it was. I've always had extreme PMS, um, but it would always last for a really long time, for like two weeks. Um, my mom knew that that's why I was being a bitch, so that's why she would always kind of give me some slack. Which thank you so much for that, mom. I appreciate it a lot, um, for real, because I was like ruthless towards my mother, <laughs> and she still would go on we would st we still hung out every single day she would just be like oh that's michelle during this time of the month you know um but she's really the only person that i felt truly safe around through all these years because she's the only one who hasn't judged me or has um hasn't you know she's taken it really well i've expressed myself to other people friends um and everyone looks at me the exact same with wide eyes and a blank stare no one says anything no one has words it's just uh what the fuck <laughs> look and so another reason why i go into seclusion and i don't open up to people about it because it is really overwhelming and trust me i know i'm the one who's going through it so um i've just felt like i couldn't do that and that's very well it could be me projecting and feeling like I can't open up to people but I I I can't say that every single person has done that to me like not every single one but a good vast majority of the people that I've tried to open up to about my mental health issues have looked at me the same way which is um they have no words or anything it's kind of like why are you talking to me about this don't talk to me about this but unfortunately, it's like the only thing that I can think about because it takes over my brain. So then I don't have anything else to bring to the table. Let's talk about nothing. Then. You talk about you. <sighs> so regardless, my depression and my anxiety have fully, at this point in my story, have taken fully over, taken over my whole life. They've taken over my capacity to think that I deserve love, um, taken over everything. Whenever I got sober, I thought that was going to be like the answer to all my problems. I thought that it was going to help my anxiety, which it did. I thought that all of my <laughs> problems would wash away and that all of these mental illnesses that I feel like I'm dealing with will be gone. And um, that wasn't the case at all because I still had more problems. <laughs> I think with alcohol, I think that masked a lot of my mental health issues and it helped. Um, and that's kind of fucked up to even say that it helped but it did help mask the problems. It did heighten them whenever you be, I became sober and I would like, it would just be make my anxiety and depression worse. So it was making it worse in the long run, but in the moment it helped me forget about whatever like depression, anxiety I had and any kind of, it would, in the moment. But once that moment was done, all of it would come back and forth. So, um, it, the, the sobriety has helped. It just wasn't the answer for all of my problems, is what, I was, what I'm saying. 
So like I said, my last episode that I had was really bad. Um, I was driving home. Um, I could feel my depression coming on and I just shrugged it off. Um, I didn't act, whatever. I was like, this is normal, just ignore it, Michelle. You've been doing so well, just ignore it. So that's what I did, I tried really hard. I did a day of errands in the morning and I went shopping and grocery shopping, whatever, and I was driving home and I could just feel the flood of the motions were like coming in all at once on my drive down the street. Like it was what, it was what, and I couldn't stop it. I couldn't stop it. It doesn't help that like a lot of things are going on right now. Like my dog is sick, I'm unemployed. So finances can always be stressful. This, this happened in September and September is like the month that my dad passed away. So that's always a little uh, just kind of looming over my head. So I kind of just try, like I said, try to shrug it off like it was nothing, like there's nothing, everything's fine. But that faint voice in the background, it's always just sitting there like dwell, 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 pity party, pity party, pity party. And I always lose to that voice, always. So I had like a really productive morning. So like, I was like, this is gonna be a great day. I was recording actually that day. I have footage from that day, which I never put out because um, there's nothing to show. I just stopped recording. So I was like, I can't do this today. <laughs> but yeah, at first you start to, you, you know, it starts to get flooded with all these negative thoughts and you try to dodge, 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 dodge. And then your my brain tires out. My brain can't handle dodging anymore. And it just is like, fine, fine. We'll listen and well, we accept you, I guess, negative thoughts. It was all the same things, but now it's like that another thing added to it. It's like, oh, go drink. You should go drink, go to the bar, you're nothing but an alcoholic, go to the bar. Yeah, so it's all the same things all over again. All the same things I read about earlier, it's all those voices. And then there's one other voice that's like desperate for help. Like, I can't handle this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't go through this again. <sighs> and those are the moments where like the only escape feels like taking myself out of my own misery. Yeah. And this is another thing I wrote. So this is the moment, and this moment seems like the only escape is taking myself out of my own misery. And then comes the convincing, no one will miss you. Your depression causes confusion for everyone. Everyone is sick of it. I'm sick of it. No one wants to listen about it anymore. That's scary. So that night I ended up crying myself to sleep, thank God. Um, and the next day I was able to open up my, to my best friend about what I was feeling, which is something I don't normally do. I usually just suppress everything. Um, but I knew I had to let someone know like what I was feeling because what I was feeling was not okay. Um, she was so warm and she gave really great advice on places I should go and um, was really encouraging about me getting on medication, knowing that it was something I had been trying to avoid, but she was really nice about it and didn't judge me and I appreciated that, thank you. So I took my dog on a walk, um, no headphones on, it was just like me and my own thoughts. And I knew that my period was coming. Like, obviously I know my cycle. So I knew my period was coming. I knew PMS was coming, but I was like, there is no way, as in like walking, I was like, there is just no way that this is caused by PMS. I was like, I don't know a single soul who PMS is the way that I do. That it is so extreme to the point that like, I want to commit harm on myself. I, I've never heard of that before. So as I'm walking, I get on my phone, I start Googling, does PMS make you wanna commit harm on yourself? And the very first thing that came up was something about PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. I've never heard about PMDD before in my life, ever. But um, once I started to read all the symptoms, it was literally everything was exactly, I could say yes to every single symptom. It was mood changes, irritability, depression, self-loathing, hopelessness, anxiety, lack of interest in people or things, lack of concentration, overeating, fatigue, suicidal. I about fell to the ground, like did I just find my fucking answer? Did I just find my answer? So, <clears throat> 
I went home from that walk. My mom just happened to call me and just was like, I, her and I, I had an episode. We got, I wasn't really mean to her. And so I just like stepped back and was like, gave her her space because I knew she needed it. We needed it. I was mean, that was not nice and not fun to be around. So she just called me and she's like, hey, I haven't heard from you while you okay. And I was like, oh, that's really funny that you call because no, I'm not. So with that, she encouraged that I call my gyna, which I was like, didn't even think about doing that. My mom was like, call your gynecologist. And I was like, well, can they help me? And she's like, yes, call them now. So I called my gynecologist. I didn't know, like, that was something else I was worried about and it was freaking me out was that I had quit my job and, like, recently and I didn't know if my health insurance was still, I knew I was getting kicked off my health insurance so I didn't know if they would, like, still see me because of that and, um, I called them and they were like, the nurse on the phone was like, I l will not be able to sleep tonight if I get off the phone with you and don't get you an appointment. She's like, you're getting in here tomorrow, whether you like it or not. She, and I was like, well, what about my insurance? She's like, I don't care. She was like, you need to get in here. She could, she was like, I can hear it in your voice. You need to get in here and see a doctor immediately. And the fact that someone, it makes me want to cry now, <laughs> but the fact that someone just listened to me and heard me was like, <laughs> This whole scenario was like so rewarding. Like it really felt great to have people really care because she was like a true blessing, this lady. I don't even know who she was. I still don't know. <laughs> so, sorry. The end of my, my, I need to like, hold on a second. Okay. So my gynecologist that I see at this doctor's office is only there like two times a month. So she got me in with a different doctor and it was a male doctor, which I was really nervous about because I'm always like female, female, female. And he was so cool and he was so welcoming and he was so relatable and was so nice and listened to everything I had to say and didn't question me and didn't question my feelings or my anything. Just was cool fucking dude. After everything, he listened to all my ailments and I told him my thing is gonna overheat. So I might have to restart this a little bit later. He ended up diagnosing me with PMDD, which um, he said that there's no like physical tests you can do, uh, but I had all the symptoms. So PMDD is what happens to your body pre-menstrual um, mentally. And PMS is what happens to your body physically. So PMS is like bloating, uh, fatigue, stuff like that. The PMDD is what causes like the mental health issues and that kind of thing. Hold on one second. Sorry, my, com my camera overheated. So I had to take a break. So if this looks different again, that is why. So with that, with that uh, diagnosis, I was given uh, some options about some um, different methods of relief. So I, he said I could do birth control. I could do holistic, which was taking testosterone, I do believe. No, pr progesterone, progesterone pills, progesterone, or just an SSRI. Um, since I had been struggling with depression for so long, I decided that I was over it and I wanted to take an SSRI. Uh, gosh, gosh, all right. an SSRI. So um, I went with that. Um, an SSRI selective serotonin uptake inhibitor, which is just a fancy word for an antidepressant. I just couldn't believe it that like, it was kind of just that easy to go and get that. I don't know why I anticipated it to be a lot harder. And I was really like adamant about not doing a pill, but I couldn't not do a pill anymore. So, um, yeah, when I left there, I was like immediately flooded with emotion. I was, um, elated that I finally had a name and an explanation for what was wrong with me. I felt relief that like maybe one day I wouldn't feel these feelings anymore and that hopefully there was like a light at the end of the tunnel one day. I had an emotional reaction that like I haven't had in a really long time, probably since I was a child. I was like hyperventilating but in like in a way of like relief, like it was just so much that was caught inside of me that I couldn't, 
I was just overwhelmed with emotion and it felt awesome to get it out. Um, my mom and I kind of celebrated on the phone on my drive home. Um, I don't know, it just gave me hope hope in a time that has felt so dark for so long it was just i got excited i'm sorry i'm like i'm real loungy in this fucking vlog in this video today i'm real loungy but that's what you guys are getting because that's what kind of video this is <laughs> so from there i went straight to the drugstore and filled my prescription immediately i wasn't waiting so um the doctor and i decided to go with lexapro i had had a few friends and known people throughout my life that have taken it and have had a positive uh reaction or positive um positive improvements from it and then the doctor himself has to have taken it and then his wife was currently on it which was another like way of him being super relatable and made me feel comfortable with talking about this he didn't make me feel like I was cr like crazy and I've been feeling like people make me feel that way often uh, make me feel crazy he was very like accepting of, and I just met the man and I know that's his job and that's what he gets paid for but his bedside manner was spot on man he deserves a little bit of a raise a little bit like a, he gets a treat every day like a piece of candy so currently what is today's date I am a month almost almost I'm 10 days away from being on Lexapro for two months now um, life is literally brighter. It's wild. It is so crazy. I dance around my house. It makes me want to cry and like, not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. But I haven't felt this good in like my whole life. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have a really ugly cry face, so I'm really sorry that you have to see that. <laughs> I'm not crying because um, I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm happy. <laughs> it's great. I've never been, I've never had this much joy ever in my life. I've never been this comfortable with who I am. I've never been so less anxious. I mean, I'm leaving for vacation with my sister this week and like I went to go pack my bag. And usually packing for me is like a very stressful situation where I stress and I'm very anxious and I'm making 50,000 lists and like checking them over and over and then unpacking and repacking. I'm not exaggerating. This is 100% how I did it. I literally was able to pack my bag and this is so stupid to cry about, but I was able to pack my bag last night <laughs> without any stress I packed the whole thing outfits clothes and it's underweight way underweight I am like I just don't even know who I am anymore and and that's in a, in a really good way because especially doing this sober it is like so rewarding and all of it feels like it's coming together and I feel like the universe is really on my side right now I'm so sorry you have to see me like this I know this isn't a good look and the coloring's all off I don't know what's happening I don't know, I just really wanted to share this because I know what it feels like to struggle and I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have anybody who listens to you. I know what that feels like. And I wouldn't have known about PMDD if it wasn't for the fact that I Googled it and did some more research and tried to help myself. So I wanna be able to help someone else if I can with my own story because I'm so sorry. <laughs> I went to the doctor or the gyno for years discussing about how bad my PMS is and everyone just shrugged it off like oh yeah everyone has bad PMS. No one ever mentioned PMDD to me. I never have been told what that was. I never said that was an option of something that I could have had. I didn't know any of that so I want to share this because PMDD is real and like it affects a lot of women and a lot of women don't know about it and it's a serious so if you're feeling this way and it's only sometimes like once a month, please call your gynecologist and please go in there and see if they can give you help. There's even options where like they'll let you do, not let you, they'll, you know, but they'll, you will just do Lexapro or SSRI for those weeks that 
you are like you know your period's coming like if you have like a very set schedule like set period which i don't so i couldn't do i didn't want to do that anyways but like if you could do like oh i know my my i start pmsing on november 7th and so then from there on you know from that until two weeks you'll take that ssri and then you'll stop it for the next two weeks and you'll do that and rather than taking it all the time there was like all sorts of options to, there were so many options and um so just yeah advocate for yourself please advocate for yourself if you feel like something is wrong don't do don't take the, don't take that way out and call someone and get help and fight for yourself because it's worth it i promise it's worth it the feelings i feel now the happiness the relief is the only word i can really think of is relief it, um it's worth it it's so worth it and i don't even i don't really even do anything i kind of just hang out at my house like all the time but even that is so rewarding yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help and people don't forget that people love you. I know it's really easy to forget that. I forget that all the time. But I promise people love you and people want you here. And don't forget I love you and I want you here. So thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry I was a mess this video that was very un expected because I've read this before and was fine so I wasn't anticipating crying but like I said I think just speaking out loud about it is overwhelming and it is emotional because this has been years of my life. Thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah love you.